Hello, Facebook, and welcome to another episode of DSI's Facebook Live. It's Tuesday evening, and that means it's time to share some words of wisdom around growing a speaking and consulting business. And tonight, I'm here with two of my friends making their Facebook de debut. This is Sammy, and this is Sienna. And for those of you, excuse you, she had a little burp. For those of you who follow my Facebook um, personal page, you know that uh, these two babies were um, pulled from a drain that was flooding about two weeks ago. And they are our newest foster babies here at Cat in the House Rescue. And we probably all know, or it wouldn't come as a surprise, that images and videos of cats make up some of the most viewed content on the internet. I'm gonna hand off these little five week old wiggle worms <laughs> because I'm having a harder time than I expected to be able to hold steel. So I'm just gonna hand these off to our cat daddy here. Thank you, sweetheart. And thank you. And tonight, now that I have your attention, bringing in that cat content, let's talk about strategies for growing your dental speaking and consulting businesses. Tonight, I'll be sharing some methods for pulling together your content and gaining experience, which will be much easier than herding cats. So tonight, this is a part two of a three-part series. Part one is available in the post that came with this attached to this video. And it's also on a blog at Dental Speaker Institute. Now I'm just gonna make sure that we're actually going live. So hang with me for just a minute while I check my handy dandy little phone here to make sure we're, oh, looks like we're working. Awesome. So in part one of this, uh, So You Think You Want to Speak or Consult in Dentistry, we talked about how environment and experience will shape us. And I shared that I grew up on a farm in a rural, rural setting, and that taught me about the importance of having a vision, a plan, and in taking action. Um, and shared the idea that when we plant a garden, for instance, we don't just throw out the seeds and hope we also don't plant them and then dig them up before they have a chance to grow. There, we know that there's a process or processes and we know that there are multiple steps. And it's similar to starting your speaking and consulting business or maybe you've been doing this for some time and want it to grow. It's a similar concept in that uh, our business like a garden is strategically planned, it's grown and it's tended. So, um, over the course of three Facebook Live sessions, we're going to be examining a three-part strategy. Let me just get this up here. Uh, for launching and growing a speaking and consulting business. And ultimately, it all comes down to vision, strategy, and taking action. So in part one, we learned that we want to create a business that aligns with our life vision. That has to be the first step. And we need to invest the time and the soul searching to determine the life goals that your business will support. You may remember that when I shared my story, um, one of my major life goals and part of my big life vision is to be a part of a group of individuals who help bring a, an outdoor cat sanctuary in the Phoenix area. Um, those of you who know me know that I'm a cat um, activist activist <laughs> and advocate. I always kind of trip on that, so it must be something there for me. But an uh, advocate for cats in, uh, in Phoenix here, it is kind of a thing um, to have uh, so many cats that are um, outside because we never have uh, really bad weather, uh, which is why I end up with so many kittens. But um, that's a big part of my vision, and that's a part of what really drives me every day with my business. Is part of what has, has driven me to have a plan to to make a, a goals for the future, to be able to um, make decisions based against that plan. We're gonna be talking about this further tonight. So it's important that you have that life vision determined and your business strategy already started to be fleshed out. Um, if you don't, you, you can listen, you can stop the recording now and go watch that video or circle back around to that when we're done. But it is essential work for continuing with this course to have that strategy. We will be working back to that tonight. And that's because the strategic plan is really a blueprint for your business development. 
And um, so let's dive into part two. Part two is about building your speech and your skills. And I believe that you wouldn't be here if you did not have something to share, something that's pulling you here, something that the world needs to hear. So the first piece of this is for you to discover, determine, uncover your niche. It's not as easy as that just sounded. For some people, it's pretty um, obvious to them. They feel like, oh, I know exactly, exactly what I would be uh, speaking about if I were to speak. Um, but for others, I find that there are you know, four or six, eight topics they could speak about that tend to be just as varied. I, I would encourage you that this is an area where less is more, and it's important to determine and pick a lane and determine how do you want to be known in the industry? Um, be known as the person who what? Is uh, someone who uh, teaches um, you know, OSHA HIPAA infection control, um, but not necessarily phone skills or dental implants, which are kind of not even really that closely connected. Uh, if you do have more than one topic area, I would encourage you to think about making sure that they're really pretty closely tied so that it can be clear for others when they think of you um, what that niche is. So how do you start? How do you determine that niche? I think that our environment and our life experiences really do shape us. I mean, certainly the reason I'm doing what I'm doing and what we've been talking about tonight is because of the years experience I've had working with dental speakers. So similarly, you as dental professionals, in what area do you feel that you have a message to share? And what clinical or administrative or business related topic do you feel pulled toward? To peel, <laughs> do you feel pulled toward? This is a starting place for determining your niche. And it also is a starting place to um, start determining the profit centers of your business. So when we go back to that strategic plan and we think about we may have a profit center for speaking and what are we going to do to build up our speaking and one for consulting and what goals do we have around building out a consulting business? And maybe there's some product that you want to sell or you want to do online um, CE or you have you know other products or services and each of those may be in a different profit center. I encourage you to think about what's that brand, what is that niche, because that definitely ties back into how you're going to monetize your business. Now, um, ultimately, you want to pick a lane, as I was saying, and become, be seen as a master of an area and not a jack of all trades. So that's really the first part of this um, section on building your speech and your skills. You have to know in what area are you going to be working. So that will be your first step. And then these next items uh, happen simultaneously. You want to develop your content while you're also improving your presentation and training skills. And ultimately, you'd also want to start your marketing at the same time, though that's in our part three we'll be discussing next time. But so developing your content as well as improving your presentation and training skills. So how do you do that? Well, let's start with developing your content. It starts with moving your thoughts to some other form that you can work with them. So brain dumping them, getting them to a written form or to even better yet, uh, typed out into um, documents in your computer or a like a course outline you could start with or just a notes document. You can start keeping track of the different stories that might have something to do with um, that are connected with your topic area as you think of them. At least make a note that you want to remember to circle back on and this, give yourself enough notes so you re will remember what it was that you had in mind. But you want to dump them from your head into some other format so that you can retain them, but also to be able to work with them later. And ultimately, the best for most people is going to be to type them out into a computer document um, as you start working with and developing the material. Now, you don't have to just start by writing your speech. That can feel like a really huge job, especially if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to speak for three hours, um, you know, that sort of a thing. So start small. Start small. Let me say that again. Start by just putting together maybe even a basic outline of what you think you might want to speak about. This 
outline is going to shift and transform as you continue to massage it over time. And you could pull from your existing content. If you're someone who already has been doing any kind of blog writing or um, have written in any industry publications, maybe you've been a guest on webinars or teleseminars, videos, Facebook Live, as you start thinking about all the different um, media options we have out there now. Um, maybe you've written a chapter that was in someone else's book or you've written your own book or um, you have developed already some online education and now you're wanting to start speaking in a bigger way on the circuit. So not everyone who starts wanting to get booked on the circuit um, is brand new to this idea of speaking or training or being a thought leader. And so look to see what do you already have? What have you already accumulated where you have notes you could pull from and, and be able to get started? Um, as I've, I'm working on a book, um, the eternal book process, which <laughs> I will eventually get finished. And I uh, have written an ebook in the past, and that all came from newsletters back in the day when we all wrote newsletters. And I had written something every month, and then I created my first ebook from it uh, several years ago. And so it made it uh, a much smaller task. And similarly, creating that first presentation. Um, or any presentation will be faster for you if you can work with what you already have created. So look to see what you have that you could already get started from, and if not, just start accumulating your thoughts into a document. Now, the next step for most people would be to just, you know, continue to work on that, but for especially if you are new to speaking, I highly, strongly suggest you work with a coach, someone who can help you with understanding the structure of the presentation, with understanding um, how to you know get the most impact, you know give give the most uh, impact to your audience to be able to help them retain. Um, there are a couple of different resources I can suggest to you here in just a second because it's not just the writing of the presentation, but also the presentation skills. And the um, speaker development coaches that I'm going to recommend um, are uh, faculty members at Dental Speaker Institute. Um, they're exceptional. I've all I've received a coaching from each of them at different times. Uh, many of my clients have worked with them. And what I would tell you is that you are going to go so much further faster if you work with a coach. Most of us as speakers are also consultants and coaches ourselves. And we need to believe in the power of coaching if we're going to be a coach, in my opinion. I think it just makes sense that if we're coaching others, then we should also look for coaching um, of our own. And so I want to encourage you to think about where could you get some additional one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, help or some workshops and that sort of thing. So uh, the, the um, speaker development coaches that I'm thinking of, that I'd like to recommend to you, one is Dr. Paul Homily who has been training uh, dentists and dental professionals for many years. And I don't know the number that Paul has trained, but I'm confident it's hundreds, if not thousands of dental professionals over the years. Dr. Paul Homily, his website is paulhomily.com, H-O-M-O-L-Y.com. Um, another is Margie Schaller. We know Margie as a laser pointer presentations.com. I believe I'm doing that off my head. I hope I got that right, Margie. And Margie is M A R G Y, and Schaller is S H A, I'm oh, sorry, S C H A L L E R. And Margie um, has written a book about uh, presentations, and she also helps with both uh, content development and presentation skills. Um, and thirdly, um, Catherine I tell Belt is another great option for, um, for presentation skills, train the trainer, and she is uh, lionspeak.net. And also um, Mark LeBlanc is uh, someone that many of us know as a um, business coach uh, with his achiever circles and that sort of thing. But he definitely also uh, trains in the area of um, helping you with your presentation skills and content. And uh, Mark is a, a really good, uh, great option as well, as each of these have multiple years training other speakers. So something to consider there when you're ready to start reaching out for maybe some one-on-one -on -one coaching or to attend. Each of them have workshops, different uh, types of workshops. So reach out to them to find out uh, how you can best uh, interact with them. If you need contact information on any of them, please just shoot me an e email, info at thedentalspeaker.com, and I'd be happy to connect you. 
So that's developing your content and improving your presentation and training skills. But we also have some other ways to um, grow in this area and something else that would be smart for you to be doing simultaneously as you start writing this presentation or as you perfect your presentation. And that would be to network, you know, participate with different groups um, and really to, to network and get out there in the industry and let others, your colleagues uh, know about you and what your focus is and, and how and where you can help, what, what solutions you provide. So um, a couple of other organizations I'd like to recommend to you in this area would be um, Toastmasters. I love Toastmasters, uh, Toastmasters International. And I couldn't tell you their website off the top of my head, but I think it's Toastmaster I, uh, toastmastersintl.org, but you probably should Google it. Um, but Toastmasters is all over the world, I'm pretty sure. For sure, they're all over the country. They have, um, in every city, they have different clubs. The cost is very low, uh, it's very low cost. And um, sorry, I was just looking at the comments. Thank you for the great information comment. Thank you for being here and thank you for the thumbs up. Uh, thanks for listening in. And um, so Toastmasters, they have multiple programs. They have a simultaneously one to help you um, with your speaking uh, and presentations, but also a leadership track. So when you become a member of Toastmasters group, you can attend as often as you'd like. Many of them meet weekly, if not monthly, or by, you know, they're all different, different times a day. Some of them even are have virtual clubs where you can be in Iowa, for instance, and be a member of a club in Florida, because um, if you don't have one close to you and you want to meet virtually. When I was in Toastmasters, it was about $10 a month. It was really low cost, met wonderful people, and it was a great place for me to get my sea legs, for me to gain some confidence. They definitely have different um, exercises and fun games you play that really help you with being able to think on your feet and also to be able to think about the number of fillers, the you know, ums and the so's and the, that sort of thing. It's just a really great place to start, especially it's great because of the low cost. I cannot stress it enough. Um, I would say if you're thinking about speaking, get to a local Toastmasters and just check it out and try it a little bit. You'll know if you've got the bug. And then if we're going to take this up to like multiple notches ahead of that, past Toastmasters would be National Speakers Association. And that's nsaspeakers.org, I believe. And um, National Speakers Association has, um, I would venture, thousands of members in multiple industries all over the country. When I first started in dental speaking with helping dental speakers and consultants with their um, growing their speaking and consulting businesses, uh, I, I was working with Catherine Eichel Belt at that time, and we would go to the NSA um, annual session every year. And I learned so much by sitting in to, on those sessions and hearing what other very successful speakers have done around their marketing, you know, around the way they run their offices with just their different approaches. It's a really great organization. I would encourage you to, to find out more about them. They have um, chapters all over the country. And in Canada, your group would be CAPS, Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, I believe it is, and it's a sister organization. So I would encourage you to look at those organizations and see uh, where, what you can learn from there. I, I believe there are membership requirements for NSA that require you to have been speaking a while to be a member, but you certainly can attend their meetings without being a member. I have for years. So Toastmasters and NSA, another great organization, and this one is just in dental, is Academy of Dental Management Consultants. So many of the members of the Academy are consultants and speakers. I believe I said this last time, I'll say it this time, I'll probably say it next time, for sure I'll say it next time as well, because marketing, uh, speaking is really a marketing activity for most people. Most people speak in dentistry because they want to attract consulting clients or they want to be able to sell their books or their other products and services. So speaking is a, a great way to be seen as a thought leader, to be able to be out there um, and, and attract new clients. So for most people who speak, they're also consultants. I would really encourage you to check out the Academy of Dental Management Consultants. Their website is a dmc.net and 
the Academy meets annually just prior to the um, ADA meeting. So for instance, we'll be meeting in Hawaii in two weeks, middle October of this is uh, 2018, for those who are watching later, we'll be uh, meeting in Hawaii two days prior to the ADA for our annual session. It's a wonderful organization that is very supportive. It's a great place to network. It's a great place to learn uh, more around uh, building a consulting business. I think one for me personally, one of the best benefits of belonging to ADMC is um, the camaraderie and the relationships you build along the way so that when you do have questions or challenges, you can hop onto their private Facebook group and it goes out to just the members and you can ask um, what, what is your recommendation or what did you do if you had this challenge? And I mean, sometimes it can feel like you're really alone in the industry because so many of us work from home or we work from our own private op audience, um, offices and we don't really have that day-to-day -day, um, colleague support. And so belonging to a group such as ADMC can be really beneficial for that reason as well. So I've mentioned several um, options for training as well as associations, that sort of thing. And I would be remiss if I did not mention Dental Speaker Institute, which of course is our organization. And Dental Speaker Institute is new in the industry. It's something that's very different than the other offerings that are out there. Dental Speaker Institute at its core is an educational offering. It is an institute. And it will have, we're working on our curriculum, we're working on our professional designation, we will announce it formally at our meeting at Jumpstart in January. Ultimately, it's a master's course for the dental speaker. So we will be working with dozens of speaker development coaches who we will, we are gonna have one spot, our website will have one repository where you can come to find um, information about different types of courses. Say you want to really understand how to maximize social media to be able to market your business as a speaker, or you want to know how to create a demo video or whatever it is that you're looking for. We're finding the experts. We're creating the one central location. It will feel like you're going to university where you go and look by topic, you find the speaker, uh, I'm sorry, the trainer, and then it will bounce you off of our website onto theirs where you can uh, go and take those courses. Those courses would be considered part of our curriculum, which will be um, a professional um, speaking designation uh, that is yet to, um, all the details are yet to be announced, but I just wanted you to know that that's on the horizon. So Dental Speaker Institute is definitely all about the education. That's our, that's our purpose for having the, the Institute. One of the benefits and one of the bonuses and one of the fun things about Dental Speaker Institute is that we do have our annual session, which is our once a year opportunity for um, all of our members to get together and learn. So that we'll talk a little bit more about at the end of the, of the session, but that's Jumpstart 2019. You can visit the website of the same name, Jumpstart 2019, and it will um, have all the details there for you. So there's a lot right there in that section, but that but that's you know really the the work that you'll need to do is to determine your niche, determine what you're going to speak about, and then just start creating you know that content, getting it out of your head. I often refer to this phase of it as um, as if you were birthing a baby. <laughs> you know, it takes time, and, and it's a creative process, and it has to grow. And it's just like planting the garden. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's one step after the other, after the other. And eventually you have the baby. Eventually you have the garden harvest. Eventually you have the speaking business that's up and running. And you're looking back and going, wow, um, that wasn't as hard as I thought it might be. If I, since I followed those steps that were recommended to me, there's definitely some ways to shortcut and there's some ways to make it longer. Um, and so I'm trying to give you the plan is to help you be able to skyrocket, to be able to, to take the fast track, to be able to get out there and be able to be speaking more frequently on topics that you're passionate about. Um, so as we talk about um, building our speech and our skills, we've covered developing your niche as well as developing your content, improving your presentation and training skills, and 
the importance of getting involved. Well, I kind of really didn't. Let me let me track back to this one. I didn't really cover this fully. Networking and participating. Relationship building. I mean, we could talk for an hour about relationship building alone, but at its core, you know, at the core of the marketing for the dental speaker, I should say, really relationship building is a super big part of this. And it's hard to do that when you don't reach out to people, when you don't go to meetings and get to know people, when you don't um, email someone and, and take a risk and reach out and ask them if you can talk with them and pick their brain. You know, it really just is about you being friendly and warm and giving and um, being able to reach out to others and see how you can help them. And in return, most people do in return, try to see if they can't help someone who's helped them. I'm not going to go super deep into networking. I'll probably do that on a future call or uh, Facebook live here, but um, know that that's a big part of this too, is while you're developing all this, be out there talking to people, letting them know what you're working on. You'll probably hear, get some um, feedback from existing experts in the industry who could give you some shortcuts. I mean, I have some ideas and a lot of people have ideas and I, I know I don't have them all. So um, I think it's great. The more people you can talk to who have had success in dental speaking and get their thoughts would be really helpful. And what a great way to build a strong network by working with people who are already successful at what you're wanting to do. So be sure you're working on those relationships and um, working at networking. Um, certainly at our Dental Speaker Institute Jumpstart uh, program this year, our theme is that it's all about relationships. And so we do have a really strong networking component this year. Uh, as well. So something to think about there. Now, um, another thought to develop your skills and experience is volunteer. Uh, volunteer to speak for a local group. Volunteer to um, be interviewed on a webinar. You know, volunteer to write an article. Volunteer to be a guest on a podcast. Volunteer to help your local dental society or um, ADMC or um, DSI, Dental Speaker Institute. You know, um, volunteer, get yourself out there, let people get to know you. And I have found that just in the volunteering, when I don't go into it looking for presentations, the presentations just seem to arrive. Um, I think that's, there's something about you being top of mind that... Um, that also helps make that become a reality for you. But be sure that you also think about where can you volunteer some time or, or do some more networking or get involved with other groups to be able to get that exposure. All right, so that's pretty much part two of, um, so you think you wanna speak in dentistry and about you know um, building your speech and your skills. So. We've talked over multiple things tonight. I would ask you to pull out that strategic plan that you started last time and you had started creating your profit centers. As I've talked through this, um, this information tonight, there might have been some things that popped out for you, like maybe you'll want to join Toastmasters or at least go check them out. You certainly can sit through a, a, a one time or more probably. Um, a freebie to just to, you know to kind of um, audit the meeting and see if it feels like it's the right vibe for you. And, you know, go check it out. Um, maybe it's something about determining your niche. I do have um, some exercises around branding and that sort of thing. I don't really have a niche um, exercise, but I would tell you that this is a where people kind of can get, they can get hung up in the enormity of how this can feel on the niche side. So if you would like help, I'd be happy to chat with you. Just shoot me an email, info at thedentalspeaker.com and just let me know you listened to our Facebook Live session and you would like somebody to talk to about your niche and just, to, I'll, I'll listen, I'll hear what, what's in your uh, heart, I'll ask you some questions and try to help you uh, narrow that down. And many times just chatting about it really helps it become clear. So I'll be happy to help with that. Where also would you like to develop your skills? Maybe you already have been working on your presentation and you feel like you've got that pretty close, but you know you need to work on your presentation skills. Go check out those websites, paulhomily.com, 
laserpointerpresentations.com, lionspeak.net. And um, Mark, um, I, I would I could connect you to Mark LeBlanc and his Achiever Circles and him um, his coaching if you'd like to email me. I don't have a, a website address for you right this moment. But if you um, want to reach out to me, I'd be happy to help connect you with any of those. And how do you connect that back to your strategic plan? And how will you network more? As I was talking about some of these organizations, did anything pop for you? Be sure that you get that added back into your strategic plan. Set a goal. Give yourself a timeline. Uh, tell yourself that you're going to get to Toastmasters before the end of the month, for instance. You're going to go online and check out the different coaches' websites right before the end of the month or by the end of the week. Be sure you sell, give yourself a goal. Make sure you have that strategic plan sitting beside your computer or be, with you, wherever it's, you're going to be most likely to see it daily. Be sure every morning you take a look at that to see where are you at on your goals. This is how we get things accomplished. Otherwise, we get caught up in the the day-to-day -day detail. And then our important document with our plan and our goals gets set aside. And we end up not meeting those goals. So um, be sure that you take those appropriate steps as well. So in our series so far, we've covered vision, strategic plan, and we've talked about how to build your content, build your skills, and how to get out there and network. Next time for part three, we will cover um, what we call execute. We've got envision, engage, and execute. And this is really about... Um, <laughs> This is really about getting booked. These are the tools, like your marketing materials. These are um, developing your website, your speaker packet. It's about thought leadership. It's about how do you get out there and get exposure. So you you know what you want to speak about. You're developing your presentation. You're working on your presentation skills. I'm of the opinion that you don't wait to market until you have those ready. To me, it doesn't make sense because you can create a presentation and be really ready to uh, perform it, you know, present it, but never get booked on it. So I think it's really important that simultaneously you also be developing some marketing materials. I have found for my clients to do that, as they continue to work on their marketing materials and refine their course description, they're also refining their presentations. It's a good, um, it's a good combo. It's not a chicken or egg first, it's really both of them. So that's what we'll cover next time. And uh, before we go, let me share with you a little more information around uh, Jumpstart 2019, which is our annual conference for Dental Speaker Institute, January 3rd through 5th of 2019 here in uh, Chandler, Arizona. And um, I thought it was going to rotate. Let's, let's have it go forward here. <laughs> There we go. So you're seeing here on the screen uh, some of our presenters. We have a really uh, beefy, meaty, uh, content-rich um, lineup for you with uh, roll-up-your-sleeves content. We've got multiple workshops. This is not an association fail meeting. You're going to come with 100 to 150 of your colleagues and other meeting um, or industries VIPs, other meeting planners, sponsors, editors, that sort of thing will be in the room as well. But it's not going to be um, hour-long keynotes on communication or something that's kind of like a typical tradition uh, leadership. It's like more of a traditional um, association feel. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not, this is not that animal. This is about you as speakers who want to make 2019 be the year. Here we are already in the last quarter of 2018. Where will you be this time next year? This time next year is going to show up. Where will you be? Are you going to be where you are right now? Or do you want to be able to say, what do you want to say? You know, that you were able to uh, book a major meeting this year, that you were able to, in 2019, to book five more engagements, that you were able to get your book published, that you were, what are those goals? What's inside you that you want to get, ac to, to get accomplished, but you're not getting it accomplished? So come to Jumpstart. A big part of what we do, we, we weave this thread through around that strategic plan idea. And by the time you leave after three days with this conference, uh, you'll have your, your marching orders for 2019 with your goals set. You're going to be 
jazzed and excited about dental speaking and you're going to be ready and raring to go. So I really hope that you'll consider joining us and we're super excited about uh, what, what we've pulled together and um, I would love for you to be there. So um, thanks again for tuning in to tonight's Facebook Live episode. If you would like to reach out to me with any questions, I'd be happy to chat with you. Info at thedentalspeaker.com. Again, my name is Vanessa Emerson, and um, I wish you a good night. Thank you.